hey guys welcome back to my channel today i'm going to introduce a new tool to identify the expats or css selectors that helps in your automation testing of a web page so that is nothing but the selectors hub so this selectors hub is an extension for your browsers either it is a firefox or a chrome browser or a opera browser or edge browser so this is just a simple extension that you can add to your browser thereby it helps you to identify the expats or relevant css expats for your web page so in this session i am going to help you with the introduction installation and features of this selectors hub tool so coming to the introduction part this selectors hub tool here it is the website of uh, the selectors hub so this was developed by this tool was developed by sanjay kumar so this guy previously developed another tool called Chropath. currently it is not available in the extensions market so selectors hub is the only and easy way and a powerful tool that helps in identifying the selectors in fraction of seconds so here the selectors hub is available currently for four browsers chrome firefox edge and opera so for installing it in your browser so just open the selectors hub portal and then here you can just click on the relevant option suppose here i am using the chrome browser here i can click on this chrome thereby i can install the extension in my browser so here it takes me to the chrome web browser store here as i have already installed in my machine it is just showing as remove from chrome so let's remove it once and i will reinstall this once again so now this is completely remote from my browser so here just you need to click on the add to chrome and click on add extensions so now this selector sub is added to my chrome browser so it is recommended to restart your browsers so i will just close this now and i will reopen the chrome session so once you open a new session of your chrome browser you may not see this selectors hub icon here so what you need to do is you need to click on this icon and here you can see the selectors hub which is unpinned so just click on this pin extension so it helps to pin this selectors hub icon into your tools bar okay so now what you need to do is so here i will take uh, one website to give you a proper demonstration so now installation is completed for this selectors hub extension so now how we can use this selectors hub in our test website so this zoopla is my test website as of now so just assume it so here we don't have any where to find out this selectors hub or any relevant to the selector sub so how we can open the selector sub so for that so just open the dev tools tab so how we can open it is just right click and click on the inspect so now we can see the dev tools so here we can see the tabs like elements console sources uh, just like normal dom so here we have the dom as well and here if you notice on my right hand side there are some more tabs like snarls compound layout as event listeners etc so at last you can see this selectors hub tab so this is the default view of selectors hub and here you can see some default uh, suggestions like relevant css selector relevant xpath class name js path so like that you can see all this information so by default it will show some selectors like this and here if you want to disable this auto suggestions you can disable it as well so just you need to click on this button to turn off the auto generated selectors so just click on this close or else if you want to customize the suggestions here you can do it suppose if you just want to know the elements that are relevant with the text so just you need to uncheck the remaining parts of remaining checkboxes or if you want to just know the id 
so you can just select like this so automatically you can see the xbox that are having the ids okay so now so and another way to access the selectors hub is and another way to access the selectors hub is so just right right click on the web page and here you can see the selectors hub right so just you need to point this and you can see this copy relevant text path so like that information you can get suppose if you want to see some more options like relative xpath absolute expert and many things means so just click on this uh, selectors hub icon that is available in the toolbar and here so we have some more options like relevant css selector js path absolute x path so you just need to choose whatever you want to see on your tab okay so now suppose if i want to identify the x path for this uh, text field so what i need to do is just click on that one and go to the selector sub you can see the three options like uh, copy relevant x path copy relevant css selector copy js path so just you need to click on that and here you can see that uh, x path or relevant x path or css selectors like this okay so now i selected the selected the css selector so it is showing the css selector for this element okay let's try to find out the x path so here i am selecting this relative x path so i will just print this in my notepad okay so this is the relevant x path for this field for this text field okay so i will just go back to this inspect element and here i will open selectors hub tab and uh, the next thing is about the context menu so if you don't want to see this selectors hub in this menu so you just need to open the selectors hub and here you can turn off the context menu so just that simple so you won't see this context menu here with the selectors hub okay so and next thing is so here by default it will show you some instructions about its installation procedure and how to use this selectors hub and uh, so like that you can get the suggestions and if you want to contact the person you just you can contact him directly from his youtube channel here and if you want to donate uh, some amount for his innovative to tool so you can do the donations with his paypal or paytm number that are mentioned here okay so coming to the features of uh, this selectors hub tool so i will just open the selectors hub tool so now i will turn on these uh, auto generated suggestions so this tool helps for the beginners as well or for the testers who are already doing the automation testing in a way like it helps to identify the selectors in fraction of seconds so most of the time the automation testers or the beginners will take time to find out the x math it is a completely time taking process to identify the elements from a web page so this selectors hub helps to identify the elements in short time so now here you can see this uh, button this is kind of a button so it helps in identifying what kind of elements that are available or what type of element here i have using to identify the xpath suppose currently these elements are all relevant to the xpath and here we can write the xpath or the css selectors that's why it is showing with xpath or css selector so this xpath and selectors will be shown if suppose if there are svg elements so here i have some svg elements oh so here you can see an svg element so this is the svg element for this zupla logo so if you notice the color of this svg this button is changed suppose a uh, previously if you notice or if you click on any of the other element so it will show you this icon in yellow color whereas if you 
click on any of the SVG element it will turn into purple in the same way if suppose if you are working on the frames so it will turn to other color if you are working with some shadow elements it will be displayed as a shadow element here in this field okay suppose if you are writing the xpath for this element uh, for example I will take the same text field so it will show you the auto suggestions suppose if you hover over this element so it will be pointed to this one right this uh, DOM structure so like span class exit like that it has the details suppose if you start writing this like a span so it will automatically show you the auto suggestions so like this suppose at the class is called to search input location public holder this is nothing but the value that is relevant to the web element nothing but the text field so you just need to double click so this will be your xpath for this element suppose if you are writing the same xpath in this uh, dom suppose here i am just using the normal conventional way suppose if i want to click on this one so here we repeatedly copy paste from this dom so like uh, so i need to copy this value suppose so if i typing this span so here you can see that point the suggestion is showing in a local that is pointed to uh, another element and it is showing as class equals to a font toggle but here i copied the value of such input location param location placeholder but now it is showing the different value suppose if you are using the selector sub means so just click on this uh, part in the web page and you can start writing this xpath like uh, as span so now this will not toggle suppose if you are writing here means it will toggle suppose if you are writing in this uh, selector sub input field means it will not toggle so it will be steady and you can write it without any issues so at the rate class equals to so now you can see this is highlighted as well so here you can see this information this tab is highlight this part of the dom is highlighted here and here it is not toggle from this selected region okay so and next part about this is so automatically it will show you number of elements that are available for the selected or entered DOM suppose if I have written like this span or suppose if I take uh, something like uh, double slash div so it is highlighting all the part and it is giving me the count that are available with this particular div tag so here we have 27 elements so here all the elements that are highlighted here in the blue outline so these are all the elements that are inside the div tag of my web page okay so and the next interesting thing about this one is suppose if you are working on if you are missing any of the structure or the syntax suppose at the rate of, I will take uh, one sample for sale so here I will write the xpath for uh, uh, this for sale web, website element for sale element so this is the xpath for this particular div and suppose if I miss any of this like a quote or something so this will turn to the red color and it will say error so like a simple quote is missing and, and it is showing error as invalid xpath and if you place this quote then it will show the tab in white color and it will not throw any error so like this it helps for the beginners as well to construct the xpath in optimistic way okay so and another interesting thing is it helps in easily identifying the elements that are with the, the same xpath for suppose if you hover over this so all these elements are located inside this ul okay so this is an order list so it contains multiple elements for sale to rent house process new homes commercial overseas flight 
find agents and discover suppose if you start writing the xpath for this means so ul will be my the tag so it contains 26 elements so here you can see the suggestions and so at the correct class so it is automatically showing the element okay so now this whole part is identified and it is highlighted here suppose if i place a slash so it supports the xpath axis that is nothing but the relation way of identifying the xpath using parent sibling descendant ancestors so here you can see all the suggestions below like this okay so here if i click on this shell so all the relevant xpaths will be identified so for example the parent you can choose parent or ancestors or anything you can choose from this selector sub tool so i will explain you about this in a separate sessions so as of now i am just showing you the possibilities and its futures of using this selector sub okay and another thing is suppose here it is showing the multiple values right so here li is my child to my ul okay so here it has multiple values uh, for example so it can it matches 61 elements so now you can notice some are highlighted in red color some are highlighted in blue color so blue color or nothing but the suggestions that is showing for the x path if suppose if you notice here the x path value equals to 1 and in the same way x path equals to 9 like that we have the elements that are available inside this ul suppose if you want to indexing uh, like if suppose i want to select this host process how we can do in normal ways so so we use a square brace and we use the value okay so now this element is selected this is nothing but the house prices so now the selection previously it is showing all the elements highlighted in my web page if i click on ok and it is showing the all the elements that are relevant to this particular xpath and if i am providing the some indexing value like this means so it is showing the single element that is relevant to this particular xpath and thereby it is showing also some 12 elements matching so we need to choose the proper xpath for this one and here i will write this now so here this is the xpath that is so showing in the suggestions of the selector sub so you can just need to choose anything from this relevant xpath or relate to css selector from this tab and in the same way if suppose if you want to write for the css selector for a particular element so you just need to mention this uh, class or anything for example so li so it is showing uh, the relevant css selectors as well here so you just need to click on uh, that element you just need to simply click on this xpath that css selector this will copy the xpath into your uh, selection so here i pasted this in my notepad so like this it is a simple way to copy the xpath you just no need to drag or select the whole part of xpath from your uh, dom and in the same way it will helps you to identify the shadow elements also so shadow elements are nothing but the elements that are that are included as a subtree of a particular dom so that will be covered in the coming lecture and in the same way there are some elements called svg elements so by default if you write with the help of uh, normal dom so it is difficult to identify or write the xpath for the elements suppose some of the icons as shown here like uh, facebook twitter or these are all the scalable vector images suppose if you write the xpath in a normal way suppose so let me right click and inspect this suppose if you copy the xpath 
so like I will just copy the XPath from here and here if you paste it so it will not show you anything as highlighted part or any information so even though if you are copying the XPath from this uh, copy option so I will try with this copy full path so it is not showing any suggestions here with the help of a selector sub it is easier to identify the SVG elements as well so how we can write is so here once you click on the element in the DOM so you can see some suggestions here like the below so like if you want to use the JSON path you can use this JSON path and in the same way this is for the relative CSS path relate to CSS selector and relate to XPath so here this will be my value for this SVG element so let's check in the DOM so now you can see the count as well one of one so which identifies the SVG element from my particular web page okay so and another feature is suppose if you are move to some other part suppose here i am trying to identify the svg element right so here i am writing the xpath for this svg element now i move to the other place of my web page so now if i click on or hit the enter so this selectors hub will make the web page to scroll to the particular location so here now i have pointed to the facebook right so i will just move this scroll bar to the top of uh, my web page so now i will hit enter in the selectors hub so this will take you to the particular location where your element resides in the web page and in many ways we can use the selectors hub so here in the coming latches we will see about the uses of the selectors hub with svg elements and the shadow dom and with xpath access we'll see in the coming latches and along with that we'll see about the css uh, selectors as well with the, the selectors hub tool that's all about uh, the current session i hope this will helps you to identify the experts and css paths in your working projects and uh, it makes you to easily implement in your project and thereby it helps you to decrease the time to identify the web page elements i hope you like the video if you like the video please do like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos on web automation and your path thank you